for each of the following pairs of objects which has more inertia. Explain why in the box. First, we have to know inertia is mass. Mass is inertia. Inertia is a reluctance to accelerate. The larger mass, the more reluctant it is to accelerate. So if inertia is mass, an object with mass has inertia. The more mass means more inertia. So when you see this on a test or in a question, mass and inertia are going to be treated as the exact same thing. Which one has more, freight train or car? Which one's bigger? Freight train. Ping pong ball or baseball? Baseball. Fast moving or slow moving bowling ball? Velocity doesn't matter. They're the same. 20 kilograms or 10 kilograms? 20. A rock, underwater, above water, outer space, doesn't matter. Still a rock, still the same mass. Baseball or bowling ball? Bowling ball. Speed doesn't matter here. Identify the following forces as applied tension, gravity, friction, or normal. So, due to string is tension, opposes weight of our objects on a surface, normal. You push down on object table, this increases, normal. Caused by gravity, gravity. Would decrease on the moon, gravity. Decrease if the surface is smooth, friction. Um, normal would break if it's too weak, the board would break. Always vertical gravity. Surface is tilted, changes direction, normal. They all have Newtons. It doesn't exist for hanging objects, normal, because it needs a surface. While a force is acting on an object, list three things that can happen and explain why. If you apply a force, net force causes an acceleration. An acceleration is a change in velocity. If your velocity changes, you're either going to speed up, you're going to slow down, or you could change directions. Now you can speed up and change directions or slow down and change directions, but remember velocity is both magnitude, that's the speeding up, slowing down part, and it's also direction. So if you change directions, you're accelerating. So we've got speed up, <clears throat> slow down, change direction. When a force acts on an object, it accelerates. Accelerates is a change. Acceleration is a change in velocity. Changing velocity is speeding up, slowing down, or changing directions. All right, we've got three diagrams for four through seven. Calculate the net force on M1. We have 30 to the left, 25 to the right, so five to the left is the net force. I'm using an arrow to indicate the direction. No net force if it's 15, 15, and two to the right when eight is to the right, six to the left, which could be at rest. They could all be at rest. Number five has a constant velocity, and that velocity could be zero. It doesn't have to be, but it could be. Number four and six could be changing directions. <clears throat> At the moment of changing directions, your velocity goes to zero. If you're going forward, then backwards, or backwards, then forwards. B, acceleration is negative. For acceleration to be negative, that means it's in the leftward direction. Net force and acceleration move in the same direction. So M1, since the net force is to the left, acceleration is to the left, left is negative. C, acceleration is positive. To the right is positive. Net force to the right means acceleration is to the right, so M3. 
has a net force of zero newtons. That's only number five. Has a net force not zero. Number four and six both have net forces not zero. So M1 and M3. Has balance forces only M2. No net force means balance forces. <coughs> and summation of forces and net force, they're the same thing. Could be changing directions, one and M1 and M3. We mentioned that before. They have an acceleration. If they're moving in the opposite direction, if velocity is in the opposite direction, then the net force, that object's slowing down, provided enough time, it would change directions. H has unbalanced forces, M1 and M3. <clears throat> I'll let it catch up. So H is M1 and M3. If you have a non-zero net force, you have unbalanced forces. Could be a constant speed, only M2. Constant speed comes from balanced forces. Could be slowing down to the left, M3. If it's moving to the left and its net force is to the right, it would be slowing down because the velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. Now if it's moving to the right, it's speeding up. All right, you got a hockey, air hockey table several miles across, no friction. So we're gonna push the puck or the disc with initial velocity three meters per second to the right. How far will the disc um, go? Well, there's no horizontal forces acting on the disc. It's gonna be at a constant velocity. Basically, it has no reason to stop, has no reason to slow down. If you remove all horizontal forces, your forces are balanced. Balanced forces means constant velocity. It doesn't mean you stop, it just means you maintain your constant velocity, in this case, three meters per second. Because there is no friction, what will the speed be after 40 seconds? Still three meters per second. You don't have to use kinematics, you're not solving for anything, you're understanding the concept. Here, it's three meters per second because you've got balanced forces and that indicates a constant velocity. C. Eventually the disc comes to a stop. <clears throat> Explain how this could happen. Another force must have acted. The only way to change the velocity to go from three to zero, that's an acceleration, you need unbalanced forces. You need an external force to act on the system. A force quickly pushes a car to the right. Where does the ball end up? Just imagine you have a ball in the center of a tray and you shove the tray. You can imagine what the ball is going to do, but why does the ball do that? We know objects at rest want to stay at rest, and objects in motion want to stay in motion. Well, this ball is right now, it's at rest. It doesn't want to move. You shove that tray forward, it's going to roll back. It's trying to stay where it was. So the ball, because of inertia, the reluctance to change its motion, wants to stay in place. It will, in the reference frame of the cart, move in the opposite direction of the change in direction. So just imagine when you're driving in a car, someone turns right and you lean left, someone turns left and you lean right. It's because you're trying to maintain your velocity, including the direction you are moving. All mass has inertia and all inertia resists change in motion. So the ball wants to stay where it was, it wants to keep its spot. Moving the tray beneath it just disrupts it and it's going to roll towards where it was. Alright, a man pushes a 10 kilogram mass with 50 newtons. So we're going to calculate label the acceleration of the mass. We know net force is mass times acceleration. So acceleration is 
force divided by mass. So in the first one, the force is 50, the mass is 10. 10 divided, uh, 50 divided by 10 would be 5. 100 divided by 10 would be 10. 100 divided by 5 would be 20. The man then doubles the force. Well, let's look at the relationship between acceleration and force. They're directly related. If you double F in the equation, A equals F over M, doubling force doubles the acceleration. So we need to calculate and label the new acceleration of the mass for each one. So for the first one goes from 5 to 10. Second one goes from 10 to 20. Third one goes from 20 to 40. The mass of the object is then halved. Calculate the new acceleration. Look back at the relationship. If mass goes up, it's in the denominator. If mass goes up, acceleration goes down. But here it's the flipped mass is going down, so acceleration is going to go up. If you half the mass, the acceleration is going to double. 10 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 80. Looking at each of these setups, one through three. So from what you just learned, if you double the applied force, the acceleration does what? If you double the force, the acceleration doubles. If you half the mass, the acceleration doubles. They're inversely proportional. If you applied four times the force, the acceleration would be four times greater, four times larger. If you double the mass of the object, the acceleration would what? It would half. That is that relationship.